Hey, what's going on? This is Tyra Green Regiment. So uh, perusing through YouTube, checking out some videos here, and I came across a video from Russell Brand talking about veganism. So let's check it out. Being vegan, or at least flexitarian, and having a partly plant-based diet is one of the healthiest things you can do, isn't it? Or all those new meats that are synthetic, disgusting, evil processed things that are going to kill you. See, now I can already tell from his tone that this is going to be a very interesting video. A little sarcastic with his accent. Oh, and you just saw that look, right? Yeah. Hello there, I'm a vegan, you're a vegan, we're on this path together. And even if you're not a vegan, you're probably trying to be a bit more flexitarian, trying to eat a little bit more healthily. So flexitarian. So for those who don't know what the word flexitarian means, is those individuals who decide, hey, you know, today I want to have steak or, you know what, no steak today or no steak this month. I want to have some chicken. So you're flexible with your diet. I want to be vegan this month. You know, flexitarian. It's cool. All good to me. As long as you're healthy, it's all good. You know, well... Apparently, a lot of these vegan meats we're all being scoffing down because they're plant-based from the plant range are actually highly synthetic processed foods. Now, as a vegan person, a lot of my reasons for being veganism are based on being you know, kind to animals, always love animals, don't eat animals, but there is a health component to it all. Okay, so this is really important that he's telling you the reason why he became vegan is more, more for the animals than, and he said slightly about that with the health component. So just keep that in mind as we continue listening. So and now because of documentaries like Game Changers and Forks Over Knives and Cowspiracy and all of the other sort of vegan oriented documentaries, I think more of us and perhaps you know more men or more people that would not have previously thought about becoming vegan are thinking about it. Well, let's make sure that we're not just eating a new type of processed crap because part of the reason we're doing this is to be healthy, right? Of course it is. Let's have a look. The food industry is determined to sell us the message that all vegan products are intrinsically healthy and wholesome. I mean, I think that the line might be, from, from an ethical perspective, I don't agree with eating animals or animal products. But from a health perspective, it seems more important that things are not processed. Like, I can... So, what he's saying, I definitely agree with. Not all vegan food is healthy. I mean, there's a lot of vegan food that I definitely do not eat. But when people use the word processed... I mean, if it doesn't come from the earth, then it goes through a process, doesn't it? See the argument, even though it's not an argument I ascribe to, that if you are eating meat that has been raised well, treated fairly, whatever, it's against my principles, but I can understand why some people will say, oh, well, that's healthy. I get it. Eating processed plant-based food, if it's not good for us, I don't think that's the solution. We should be heading in the direction of healthy food and healthy eating and changing our mentality around fundamental things like the food we eat. Don't you think that really what we have to do is move our behaviours and our habits as closely into alignment with the conditions we are evolved for as possible. Move our bodies in ways that we are evolved to move them. Eat the foods that we evolved to eat. Now, I know a lot of people make arguments about you know, are, are being omnivorous, omnivorous, omnivorous for that. Um, but me, I'm ethically vegan. And behaviorally, I want to live in harmony with what I evolved to do. So I get that. So he's ethically vegan. So it does sound like he doesn't really like foods that look like animals or look like their animal equivalent. So I definitely understand that there's a sect of the vegan population that does feel that way. No problem with me at all. Now, all right, I'm not going to go and like, live in the woods and just eat berries once a year. What I am going to try and do, though, is live within the civilized condition I find myself within, but without completely neglecting the fact that I am a part of nature, that I have an inner nature and a relationship with, apparently, outer nature. Many of the vegan meat substitutes aren't healthy at all, as they fall into the category of ultra-processed food, first identified by Brazilian academics as part of the NOVA classification. I'm one of them vegans that eats a lot of processed food. Like I love them. I love like the phony fake sausages and the fake... Oh, so he does. He likes the phony fake sausages, he says. Okay, that's cool. At least he's being honest. Oh, by the way, make sure you like this video. Hit the subscribe button so the algorithm can keep showing you my videos. In bacon and the burgers and the chili con carnies and all that stuff. Because me, I grew up eating things like 
sausages, beef burgers, fish fingers, maybe even some of spaghetti hoops with little sausages in them. I grew up on that kind of stuff. It's sort of in me and I want to be healthy. I'd love to live on just quinoa and acai bowls and green juices. And let me tell you, I- I think he means acai, but that's okay. I do my share of that as well, but man, don't you just love a delicious chicken tasting vegan burger thing where it's actually indistinguishable from the meat stuff that you would have ate in my case, wow, 30 years ago. So I'm a customer of that stuff. If there was a like fake vegan meat tasting stuff that was good for you and healthy, that would be fantastic. Ultra processed foods are now widely accepted by food experts to be unhealthy and probably addictive. All right, on top of everything else. Like, that's no wonder I can't stop bloody eating the bleeding things. I don't have a choice. <laughs> which, is, which is really funny. I mean, thus far, what he's saying makes sense. I mean, he's being very honest and he likes, so it does sound like he does like plant-based meats. He calls them fake meats and I know a lot of people do. Um, and he likes them because he was used to eating them. When, well, he was used to eating meat and sausage, like you said, when he was younger. And, and I, I do feel there's a sect of the vegan population who feels the same way. So, for example, they still continue, or maybe we, like myself, 100% plant-based, we like the taste of, of meat, although we're not going to eat animal meat. But if we can have pea protein, you know, meat, I, and it tastes very, very similar. And if you think about it, Everything tastes pretty good if it's seasoned correctly, right? So that's really what it comes down to because no one's going to eat raw meat unless you're an animal. UPFs don't just trick our palates. They confuse our bodies too, triggering hormones which encourage us to overeat. I don't want food that tricks me, do you? I don't want to eat a sausage that's got an agenda. Plant-based barbecue chicken goujons are indubitably... That's the first time I've seen that in a normal article ultra processed containing over 30 ingredients including methyl cellulose maltodextrin and dried gluten now remember you this is not the first time that you've heard of metacellulose we mentioned it in one of my past videos which is the cell membrane of a plant glucose syrup all those things except for dried glucose syrup sound pretty disgusting and like enemies of the body like methyl cellulose sounds evil maltodextrin that sounds like a pretty bad guy if you were to meet in the dark alley even the word vegan has been sidelined, presumably because it has connotations of abstinence. These days, it's all about plant. Tesco has named its vegan range Plant Chef. Marks and Spencer's has Plant Kitchen. Morrison's has Plant Revolution. Waitrose has Plant Life. Plant Life! Asda has Plant Based. This word plant has a whiff of nature, countryside, health, fresh air, natural leafiness. Sainsbury's Plant Pioneers range has a cheeky green leaf peeking out from the logo, even though there's nothing green about the beige Cumberland, shroom dogs, or orange smoky bacon rashers, both of which have over a dozen ingredients. While health experts exhort us to eat more vegetables, this isn't what they mean. They mean actual vegetables. So from an ethical perspective and from a deliciousness perspective, eating them fake meats is a plausible alternative to crueler meat products and looks like there ain't too much compromise on the taste front. But me, you know, at my age, I don't want to be eating mindless junk. Most of the things we do, we want to do consciously. We want to be conscious in our relationships. We want to be conscious the way we talk to strangers, pass us by. We want to be conscious about what we put in our mouth and the reason that we're doing it. Processed foods being sold as healthy is obviously just another marketing exercise. I suppose what I would like to do, and probably what a lot of you would like to do, would be lay on my back and just eat ice cream and wolf down hamburgers and watch films and have the occasional orgasm. Well, that's a moronic aspiration. What I need to do is awaken, harmonise with my environment, live lovingly with the people in my life, treat other people with respect and uh, grace and eat well and healthy, probably things that are in season in the environment I'm in at the time I'm living in. I'm not an anti-progress person. I'm not anti-pleasure. I'm not some abstemious, though I don't drink, smoke, take drugs, all sorts of stuff. You know, I, I actually love all that stuff. What I think is we shouldn't be living in a distracted and unconscious way now more than ever. If you look at my channels, it's clear. And if you look out your window, it's clear that this is a point in history where awakening is an obligation. He's definitely right about that. I mean, awakening is an obligation at this point. 
And I mean, I don't think we need to listen to any more of what he's saying because the video is almost done, but I, I definitely agree with him. He just sounds like he's speaking, you know, from a, a higher consciousness level. He does admit that he eats plant-based food, uh, plant-based meats, and he would just wish that there were healthier alternatives to those. So my response to that would be, they're coming, you know, absolutely. If you look at the, the landscape of plant-based meats years ago, so where we are now, I mean, you know, they are tasting better and they're using better ingredients. And I definitely agree with him 100%. Not all plant-based meats are healthy. Um, a lot of them do use, like he said, malodextrin and, you know, they're using all of these, you know, ingredients that meat products are using as well. But again, there, a lot of these companies' goals are just to get you to eat the foods because they know that if they don't make them look and make them taste exactly like their meat equivalent, you're not going to buy the products. But there are definitely some alternatives out there and it's getting healthier and pretty soon you will, it'll be indistinguishable. A plant-based burger versus a meat burger. And then in terms of the health component, the plant-based burger is going to win. Absolutely. So just keep looking out for that. It's going to happen and just accept it because it's all positive anyway. And for me, most importantly, the health, but also the macronutrient complex, which means how many fats and carbs and uh, proteins exist within the plant base because all of that helps us, especially for those who hit the gym. So just wanted to give you a little bit of what Russell Brand had to think and what his take was on veganism because he is vegan um, and I am as well. And we will progress with this positivity or this positive movement. Thank you for watching.